Welcome everybody to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind. We wrap around everything because it isn't just about making sure your money is safe and you don't lose a dime in the stock market or create tax-free income you'll never outlive or have your living trust. All of those things are so important. But it's also important to make sure that your business has legs, that you're planning everything, that you're taking care of yourself, doing your exercises, right, right. drinking your water. All of it's part of a holistic plan for healthy money and happy life. And so I bring on some fabulous guests. You've heard the intro today for Christine, and I'm really excited today because we're going to talk about how you stand out from the crowd and have life with passion. And that's pretty exciting to be able to wake up in the morning and be excited about what you're doing. So I just, I just want to get right into it. Christine, welcome. I'm really glad you showed up today. And Thank you, you so do much, stand Chris. Out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. I'm honored. I I told you in the pre-chat, I really enjoyed your conversation. So I'm honored to get to be on, on this side of the mic today. Thank you. I know when, when you first came on, you just looked like, like a bubbly effervescent, <laughs> you know, so... Joy is contagious, right? So that's a beautiful thing to pass on. And, you know, your specialty is is media and podcasting, right? You are the yeah. expert in that. And you really want to want to show people, entrepreneurs and CEOs and business people, how they can leverage their platform with with broadcasting, right? Totally. Yeah. And to get a little bit meta, um, you know, it's this idea of conversations like this one, right? right. Interviews and uh, and these opportunities that we have to connect that then get shared out to to an yeah. audience. You know, that is the most exciting thing because I think it's it's a combination shot. I mean, you know, you can be fabulous all by yourself, but there's something that ignites when two or more connect, right? And it mm -hmm. and it quantums, just like when you save your money, right? There's something about when you save your money, it gets lonely and it, and it attracts more money. But if you keep spending it, then it, it goes bye-bye. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there's something about, you know, like attracts like. And, and standing out from the crowd because there's a lot of noise out there so when you get people that come from their heart and transparent you can change the world right absolutely yeah it's that combination of having that that drive to to make a difference right which right. which you do with helping people with, with one of the top stressors oh. in in the entire world and yes. uh and then also having having a strategy to combine your energy with so that it isn't just throwing stuff at the wall right but it gets to be something yes. that you enjoy and that that helps you to build your business instead of just one or the other which i think happens all too often right right exactly you pinpoint it because you know, you go to school, you learn how to make money, you get out of school, like I told you, and what do you do? Go make money. And then most people give it to some guy to gamble. And it's like yeah. a roulette wheel. Will it be there yeah. when I retire or not? Don't live in that stress. Live in the peace now of planning ahead of time, right? Having it figured out. There's so many cool things that I've talked about in other shows on what and how to do it and, you know, financial fitness strategy sessions. And, you know, I talk about, you know, hopping on and doing all that, but this is about you because I got to just tell you like it is, you know, I had a syndicated radio show and I shifted over into podcast and I'm going to say, I'm one of those people that throwing it at the wall, like, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. And uh, ugh. it's, it's, you know, it's frustrating because, you know, as a solopreneur and, and a small team of priorities, you got to have a plan. How do you do it? How do you set yourself up to stand out of the crowd and grow your audience, right? Totally. Oh my gosh. And you went through from something that was is highly, highly federally regulated, right? <laughs> the airwaves. Yeah, right. And a business that's been around, you know, a long time 
to the wild, wild west of a largely unregulated industry that then essentially doubled during the pandemic. And so all the rules we thought we had then just changed. Right. And the landscape is like, well, we just came out of this strange time. It's completely different than it was three years ago. What now? <laughs> right. Where are we now? I know. You know, I don't like saying it used to be, but my life a few years ago was I was a national speaker. I'd be on an airplane traveling one week out of the month, speaking all over the place. That is not come back to me like it used to be. It's different. Everybody wants virtual. It's free. It's, you know, less hassle. And, you know, I enjoy the less hassle part, I got to admit, but it's different. So now it's a new terrain, right? It's a new, how do you, you've got a map. You know, there's a lot of faith in there going without knowing and just trusting, you know, the spirits moving you in the right direction. But you've got to map out how to, to sequence broadcasting or how to sequence, you know, doing a media blitz, right? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And you specialize, you know, you specialize in and pod get being booked on podcasts mm -hmm. and on media, right? You're not just mm -hmm. you start. Tell me a little bit about what you did before you were doing media. Yeah. Tell, tell me. So now that. this is this is kind of the passion project combination of the last 24 years now of studying, teaching, and uh, practicing media, advertising, storytelling for, you know, the stages of various mediums and really figuring out the voices that I most want to help elevate. You know, um, I, I've been lucky enough to help bring some of the biggest stories on some of the biggest stages in the world to life. Like I got to broadcast the Olympic games three times for the IOC. And nice. one of, one of those um, games included me standing on the ice with the figure skating medalists and the short track speed skating medalists. Nice. And another one of those games was sitting bench side next to the team USA basketball that included <laughs> LeBron James and Kobe and AD and KD and these people that, I mean, number one, they're physically larger than life. Right. Yeah. But to, right. to experience that energy and, and that um, what everything that goes into it and to be a part of it, such such an honor and to know that through those experiences, I also learned that my passion was for helping folks who were earlier on in their careers, that they weren't the A-list yet, mm -hmm. that they had something, have something important that they're doing. And that one of my, the gifts that I was given was to help them reach more people and so it's looked a lot of different ways over those decades. Uh, it eventually kind of led to this new media platform of like long form interviews and connection, because that to me is where the magic happens, whether it's one on one like this, but then gets broadcast to many uh, or whether it's, you know, a different stage. Um Podcasting is has become pretty universal for for most folks and, and pretty accessible if you have the tiniest bit of bandwidth at your internet connection. And so it's it's an amazing opportunity to, as you know, to share right. to share your expertise and to connect. Right. And the and you know, and being heard above the noise and being able to have an impact you know, not just being another podcast. Well, maybe that's just my goal, but, <laughs> you know, because you want, because I want to reach millions of people because I see a whole lot of little sheepies about to go off a cliff yep. within the money world. And I have got, a, you know, a course I'm about to launch called Create Income You'll Never Outlive. It's Yay! taken me, yeah, three decades of, well, around year 25, you know, I got this little tap on the shoulder, you know, write a book, 
I don't want to write a book, you know, so, you know, but it's sort of those God says, you got to write a book. No, I don't want to write a book, you know, a couple of years, but I did with about five editors, mm. <laughs> you know, have a number, number one bestseller. Thank God. Yes. It was a wonderful journey and, it, you know, did a lot of TV and radio inside of that. And I had to have the media. I had to have that whole setup. Now that setup's so different because we can just zoom in and not fly to New York and, you know, be all buffed out. Like we had to, we can kind of be way more casual, and kind of like, you know, in your workout clothes or whatever. But the point was that navigating this new terrain, like you said, we're in this new season. Like we're, we're we can really create what we want to in a sense. It's sort of like, it's like a blank check of how we can create and bring people together because the momentum that I'm going towards is I didn't really realize I was going to this till I got my show got lifted up into the C-suite network and mm -hmm. and really I got blessed with a conversation with Jeffrey Hazlett who has um, some masterminds and I got inspired with the, with a, a very exciting mastermind that will develop through as I go forward call, called Conscious Giving counsel mm. so it's showing people that have done well right how to use that war wealth to help people to change the world and and so instead of me just you know like i already got there like of you know make money for myself it's just around year 25 it was like you know it's not about me it's about now it's like midway through my life it's like now take the business and what can i use the business to give back right help other people so that's where the pro you know the course came in and all these other things came in is how how to get out there but honestly personally it's been a media and digital and mark has been a huge struggle Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. you have that, you know, you meet someone and I just know instinctively you have that part and you're calm with it. It's not like, you know, craziness in my brain. It, you, that's your forte, <laughs> right? That's what you show people how to do. Yeah. And, yeah. I think that we... I mean, I could jokingly say, you know, making things overcomplicated is a superpower, right? Like I always have a million ideas. Right. There are so many different ways that we could, you know, go with growing a podcast or being a guest or whatever. And I think uh, making it as simple as possible so that we actually do something, right? Right. So that we don't get overwhelmed with the complexity of something and just sit in analysis paralysis. I think yeah. that is that is the key you know and that is that's how things actually happen i mean it sounds so cliche to say mm -hmm. but whether you want to have a top podcast or you want to be a guest on a top podcast it really does start with like what is the simplest next thing that you could do yeah like just for people that are listening right now there's a lot of people that listen that have podcasts that broadcasts that are in different groups and yeah. some of them want a podcast to help their business some people want a podcast they want to be famous or, right everybody's kind of got yeah. a different reason some people want a podcast to reach millions of people what would what would you what little tips would you suggest people that are creating how can they be heard above the noise would you say you know it's interesting from what I have experienced on the guesting side, so really helping people to become authentic, value-driven guests on other people's stages. So like in this case, let's talk you know specifically about podcasts. The way that the industry works right now is most people are just in it transactionally, whether or not they know it whether or not they mean to be, it's this idea of like, get on as many shows and the biggest shows and, right. you know, get on and share my talking points and just, right. you, you know, essentially I call it like treating the podcast hosts, like you are having a one night stand with them <laughs> rather than having a first date, 
that you would like to continue into a longer term relationship. Yeah. And um, what I have learned, I didn't make this up because I help people with guesting, but what I've learned from other people who've been in this industry a lot longer is being a guest is the number one way to grow your own podcast. So if you don't have your own podcast, but that's a desire of yours, I would say be a guest on other people's shows and learn what you like and what you don't Mm. in order to inform your own podcast because that's going to really simplify how you do it. You don't have to try as many things because you've seen it. And my experience is that starting your own podcast is as much work or requires as many resources of whatever kind as starting another business. Yes. (laughs) Right. So if you have your own podcast, you probably feel me. If you Mm -hmm. don't like really, really take that in. And what's the simplest entry point that you can have into podcasting, into potentially growing a big podcast, an audience, a business, all of that, like learn how to be the best guest podcasts have ever had. And that's going to do more for you than just throwing out a podcast and realizing after a couple of months, how much work it is and doing what most people do, which is what they call pod fade, where you just make like, I think the number is like eight to nine shows is the average. And then you just like disappear into the sunset (laughs) after that many episodes. Cause you're like, I haven't made any money. I'm spending all my time doing this. What's the point? I'm out. Yeah. Nobody. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. (laughs) That's, that's really, well, you know, you really were an example when we hopped on before we pushed the record and you started asking me questions and I immediately learned from you. It's like, what a nice approach. Now, I do that with my guests because, I, you know, I almost, you know, I'm, promo- I'm promoting them. Now, when I was at my syndicated radio show, I was doing that for a few years and I was just promoting everybody. Really wasn't making me any money, but, it w- but I sure enjoyed meeting all the people. I could have just kept doing it, but it was like, well, I got to make this profitable somehow, right? Exactly. And that's not really taught. And, and that, you know, how, how do you make it profitable? You know, you don't get sponsors on, you know, when people are first starting there, they don't, I guess getting over 100 is a big deal for most people, right when they start to get so to get partners to get sponsors. Is that what other way do people have that they can make money with their with their podcast? Yeah, so there are There are a lot of different ways that you can make money as a host or as a guest now. And I think you're right. The main thing that everybody talks about, at least the big podcasts that we all look up to or hear the most about, the way that they monetize is based on the size of their audience, right? And the fact that a sponsor wants to get in front of that many people. Um, And Also, what I now know to be true is let's say you sell services or let's say you sell your own products or whatever, you can speak about those in a way that's not constantly spamming the audience, but that invites them to either work with you or purchase from you because you have created a loyal following, right? And it's a natural extension of of the of your brand for them to or a percentage of them to take the next step with you you know whatever right. that is right so people right. fall in love with you and they're like I want some more Chris in my life right <laughs> the next step is to book the financial fitness strategy session with you right, right. actually right. get to get on the phone with you for free like you're a you're a celebrity on the internet and then they have the ability to click a button and get your help right yeah and yes. and they might never have found you were it not for for this podcast or maybe it was a guest that you had on your podcast who shared their episode you know and right. and so through that network then they found you and resonated right, right. so right. I think it's remembering the fact that we all typically like 
want to jump to Z when we're at like A. And we're like, <sighs> how can I get sponsors and advertisers? I have three downloads, you know? <laughs> right. um, but the truth is yeah. always the truth about business, right? Is that right. people are buying from people, you know? Yeah. And people right. do business with people. And so whoever that is, if it's somebody inside of a corporation, if you are like, I need to connect with HR directors at mid-sized companies with revenues of XYZ, or you're like, I want to help solopreneurs or people right. who need to figure out what their business ideas or anything yeah. in between, you know, there's a podcast for that, or there's a podcast topic for that, or there's a service for that. And it's like, the more that you're able to bring your yourself and your passion and your work to this avenue and do that consistently, then the more people are going to know about you. I mean, it sounds overly simple, but yeah. I just spoke at PodFest and I was talking to some friends there who make millions of dollars a year on their podcasts. And I was talking to the guy who runs ads for Oprah's podcast, right? Mm, and right. and you know what? Every single one of them said is the most important thing. Uh, what? Consistency. Mm, okay. It's like the least sexy thing ever. Yeah, really? <laughs> and- I mean, that's why they're, that's why they're the keynote speakers working five days a month and making millions of dollars a year. You know, right, it's because they've right. been doing it for a minute yeah, and doing it and learning to do it better and better. That's very cool. Now that consistency, like you, whoa, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so simple. You know, The same with money. You were telling right. me about somebody who saved a few hundred bucks a month right, for a long period of time. And then you know, really, really set themselves up. Right. The right. opposite of sexy. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's very cool. And so as, as you're, you know, working with people, and somebody says, okay, I want to go on a podcast tour. Or is that what you do? Or you set people up with, you know, say, because apparently, you know, you're well connected. And so people could actually engage you or your services, right? And, and how does that work? Do you, get, do you get them on podcasts or what's the process there? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think the most common model with podcast guesting, if you want to be a, a guest, is, is to think of it like an agency model, right? Where... Mm -hmm someone might hire an agency to get them on X number of shows. And we have an internal agency in our company and we help people to get placed. The big caveat though, is they have to be willing to learn to be a good guest. Right. And, right. and I personally, with my values, I would much prefer to teach people how to do that. Or maybe I'm training their team, consulting with them. Um, teaching the founder or the executive how to be a great guest on this stage. Just like you might, if somebody said, you got a TED talk, Chris. If somebody said to me, Christine, you have a TED talk, I'd be like, I got to hire somebody to help me get ready for this TED talk. I don't want to blow it. Right? right. Look what the right. TED talk did for Brene Brown. It created a whole industry of people who want TED talks, you know? Right. Right. So so I would know this is a huge deal. I got to get some help. I'm not just going to walk out there and be like, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, but right. that's the way most people treat podcast interviews. They're like, well, I'm good with people. Yeah. So, you know, I'll go on and I'll just talk about how amazing I am. <laughs> I have my talking points because I know how to give a keynote or a right, live or whatever. Right. Yeah. And you know what? It's not yeah. the same. It doesn't yeah. work. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, so to me, like one of the big biggest values of our company is um you got you got to be willing to practice beginnership you got to be willing to learn a new skill and if you get on the phone with me or somebody on my team and you say oh i'm an amazing podcast guest i just need help to get on bigger shows than i've been on i will say that's nice to hear let me make a referral for you we're not the person for you i don't right. want your money i don't care how much you have because mm -hmm. it's out of alignment, right? So I think, and, and, but there are also the people who say, oh, I've been on a hundred podcasts and I've never made, I've never signed a client. I didn't grow my audience, <laughs> right. you know, I didn't, whatever. Right. And I'm like, 
Do you hear the words that are coming out of both sides of your mouth? Do you think it could possibly be a skill to learn? Right. So I really, I really want to change the way that it's done across the board because right now there are something like 12 million people who want to be guests. Hmm. And there are shows that number in the hundreds of thousands that are looking for guests. Wow. And those numbers are only going to keep getting more and more, have the bigger discrepancy, right? As, as hosts get more and more tired of people showing up as vampires (laughs) and going like, let me suck what I can out of the audience. You worked so hard to build. Yeah. And let me just go on to the next one. So, so. Exactly. I mean, to answer your question, we teach people how to do it themselves all the way up through helping them do it and placing them on the shows that I have gotten to build relationships with. But that's my Rolodex. That doesn't yeah. get open just because I said, oh, I'm going to book you on 10 shows. I don't do that. Yeah. Other people right. will, right? Yeah. So it's it's this idea of this is a skill. It can literally become the center of your business where you don't have to live on social media. It can create time for you. It can trans, you know, it can make ads irrelevant for you. So you don't have to worry about algorithms, but none of that happens just because I was honored enough to have somebody invite me on or I pitched myself or whatever. It's, it's an effort. And, um, and it just depends on which resources uh, you, you have at the moment. Do you have more money? Do you have more time? Do you have more team? What, what's the way that you want to enter the game? So that's a really long answer. (laughs) That's like my soapbox. (laughs) Well, that's good because you covered a lot and, and a lot of other little questions I probably would have asked for the different levels there. But, but I, but I got to say this because it it struck me and I'm not like bragging, but I've done, you know, hundreds or whatever interviews and podcasts and, but you're the first guest that I've had that has come on very conscious and ask questions like pre-setting up how you could serve the interview mm-hmm. best, which empowers the, you know, the host. Wow. She's literally like cares and she's nice and she's listening and I mm. want to help her even more. So mm. that's instant thing and that's an attitude that's your being i mean because i know you're i can tell it's not like you're just putting that up for the show and then you turn into this other thing you know which you can tell when people aren't transparent they're like oh look at me and then they're monsters (laughs) but you (laughs) (laughs) right we know those guys (laughs) we met those people lots of them (laughs) but (laughs) but the point is that that opens up that's that's a communication because I think we're really broadcasting even when we're not online that what we think what we do how we move how, you know we create mm. the world in which we live the way we think mm. what we give life we give all of those things are creating the frequency that we're broadcasting mm. and mm. what happens in our life what shows up and so it's it is a state of being, really, mm-hmm. and we're learning how to be more that way. That uh, that's what I think the the schoolroom Earth is is a lesson mm-hmm. area for that, right? So I love that we're here, and then we have the little prop of a podcast, you know, which is the outward form of what happens inside spiritually. That happens inside. We're really doing this inside. We're not all aware of it all the time, at really at what great level it is, but how much more connected we really are than we really are aware of. So with mm. that being said, all that you said, that impacted me right away. And so that opened up doors inside of me and maybe even things that I might not have talked about if I just looked at your bio and went, oh, well, how did you do the thing, you know? But it, but it opens up that transparency and honesty. So that Ooh. was that was that was the inspiration that really started the show was how you showed up. Mm. Thank you. And you know, one of the things that as I was getting ready for our conversation was so exciting to me uh, was that you include this holistic approach. Um, you know, 
part of my own financial journey has been, and probably this is reflective of like life, right? Of going, right. okay, these are the things that I heard growing up, or these are the things that I right. heard at this age. And this is what I was supposed to do or supposed to like, and going, why did that just make me want to like throw up? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to question it now. Yeah. You know, that somebody who is nothing like me, looks nothing like me, is has zero experience of life like me, but has a big platform. Puts things out. But if I met that person on the street and they said those things to me, I wouldn't try to convince myself to do them. And so where I'm going with that without naming names is like, I really appreciate how you just seamlessly weave in healthy money as part of this healthy, wealthy life. Because I think that that's solely like sorely lacking in this space. And especially um, I think having women speaking in that way, rather than trying to fit themselves into the box of this hard line of that we've heard from so many men over the years, total stereotype, my experience, right? Um, It's very refreshing. And I mean, to me aligned um, because instead of being like going into fight or flight, every time I think about money, because I'm being preached scarcity and you're an idiot if you buy, you know, tea latte from your favorite place, if you don't have X, Y, Z in place, then it's like, no, this is about having peace of mind. This is about enjoying my life. This is not about waiting for the day. I hopefully make it to X, Y, Z age to enjoy it because I hated the rest of my life because all I did was obsess about how I could squeeze more, you know, pennies out of the lemon, right. To mix metaphors. (laughs) Exactly. 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 You, you know, you hit it. And that's what I saw. Not that I'm so smart. I just did it 32 years, still in practice, right? But, you know, seeing, you know, from, you know, multi millions to nothing to, you know, it didn't have anything to do with how much money people had. Money Mm -hmm. is an energy. And, Mm -hmm. and, and that same energy works in, in all the parts of life. Now, I got to admit, when I was young and I grew up, you know, I was seeking God. I was seeking the truth really young. And I, you know, I hit the road. This is in the roaring 60s, right? When I, we walked barefoot across America like Christ, literally. Mm. White robe, bare feet. I mean, I left the world for, you know, 15, 20 years and had my mountaintop experience. So mm. I came back, not from, I got to make a lot of money so that I can, you know, die with a lot of money or whatever, you know, or have kids. It, you know, it really bothered, it bothered me even when I was a little kid about, you go to school, you learn how to make money and then you get married and then you have kids and then you die. And that bothered me. It was like, mm. I don't want to die. You know, it was like, there's something more going on than just what we're seeing with our eyes. So it caused me to go inside. Okay. Mm. And make that connection inside with spirit. And that gave me a different, like putting on a different pair of glasses, gave me a different perspective, made me look at, you know, the whole money world. And when I entered into it 30 years ago, I was really the one of the only go to these big 3000 men conferences. And and it was like one of the few 10 women maybe there in the, in the Hmm. nineties. So it was like breaking through and it's just trains of thoughts, a train of thought that is kind of controlled. And now it's coming, you know, now it's time for a balance because this whole planet is in the shift. It is, mm-hmm. in, you know, it's in a, it's in a transformation, you could say, but there's a whole lot of shakening for an awakening right now that's happening because everybody, we all got stuck in the mud. Me too. We all got stuck in the, you know, the day to day because there's so much more going on. So mm-hmm. it is natural because it's all one thing. And so that, that is my favorite thing to, to talk about and weave in. And, and it's only allowed, I'm only allowed to like get out of the stable when the guest, which you're good at, knows how to open that up 
Mm. And and then there's a balance in our conversation um, because you allowed that, really. You're, you're open for that kind of a conversation, you know, which brings it out. And that's that's a gift that I, I can tell and people that are listening could tell, you know, that you're an expert in that. And that's how they can tap into you and learn from you into how to start from that, you know, start from that space instead of grinding through the bottom. Because if you start with that step like you did, other doors would open up that you wouldn't even Mm. expect, right? They really do. And it's, and it requires a level of surrender and trust. You know, we're talking, speaking about energy right. and, and detachment, which, you know, right. I mean, I'm getting invited to practice these things on a daily basis. Cause it's like, they're all my life lessons. Right. So, <laughs> um, but it does, it requires them. Cause if you go in with a lot of attachment to these conversations or you go in with a lot of attachment to signing a client or getting a promotion or, you know, yeah. whatever your thing is that you get really hung up on when it relates to money. Right. Right. When, when you go into a podcast being like, I got to find a way to talk about my work or else uh, I won't get it the most I cut out of it and it will be a waste of time and I might have to go back to posting on stories and many times, right? <laughs> Number one, people feel that. Number two, it's a boring slash a nightmare for everyone involved. And like, number three, you're, you know, forgetting the most fundamental thing, in my opinion, of, of being, uh, sharing a stage with somebody. It's not your stage. And the person that is hosting you, whose stage it is, has worked very, very hard to build right. what they have, right? right? And yeah. and yeah. like when you have any clue about that and show any kind of respect for that, it, I mean, you just, you can never predict what's going to happen in the best way possible. Right. So yeah. you're absolutely right. Right. And you, and, and like, Normally when I do, I mean, we could talk, we could just keep talking. <laughs> That's what's so like a, a river, right? It just is just yeah. a flow. Normally I cut like 20, 30 minutes, mm. right? And, and we're, and I, like, I feel like I'm not done. I could, we could keep going. <laughs> so we'll, we will come back again. I'm sure we will in some, in some form yeah, or another. Absolutely. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fabulous to talk with like-minded people and, people that realize that you've worked really hard decades to build the platform. A lot of people come on my show and they don't, they, like you said, it's like the one date and, you know, hi, bye. And, you know, you're doing all the work and producing it and this and that, you know, and you're, sell, you're doing it for them in a sense. It doesn't, you don't, you know, like I'm saying. So that respect, respect is that, that really, that, you know, realization of that in that way that you enter the stage that creates the wave that goes out to the people that are listening that might get someone to say, listen to this. This this lady's got this going on here. You should listen to what she's saying. It'll help you. So um, with that being said, let's uh maybe you have one final note and we won't we were not gonna say goodbye. We're just gonna continue for later. How about continued. that? Does that yes, sound good? To be continued. Okay. I to love it. To be continued. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I think that it is what I would offer is just like what you have done for 30 years of working from the time that you were one of 10. I can't do that math. Maybe you can. The percentage of 10 women in the room versus 2,990 men, right. you know, and, and going like, this can be different. This can be different. We can change right. possibility. We can change outcomes. It doesn't all have to be hidden. You know, who does it stand to benefit that it's hit all of those things, right? I, I would offer the same thing about this platform and this stage, right? And about collaborative um, communication, if you will, right? right. Th- that that this is a viable, sustainable, predictable way of of building a business or building a brand. If you're inside of a company and you have a responsibility to represent that company, no matter the size, right? That that the way that podcasts are consumed, the folks who listen to podcasts, why we listen, why we produce, why we're in this industry, 
gives us the ability to change business, industry, capitalism, all of these things for the better. And I think that that's, that's the shift to begin to play with that can take you outside of the grind or the hustle or whatever you felt you have to do in order to, to grow your income, grow your assets, the same as what you offer, you know, with, with how you help your clients. So that's, I think that's the possibility I want to leave people with. And I am so grateful for this conversation. Me too. And you, you triggered me by saying shift because my other business, I have a business partner and her and I had started legacy shifters Mm -hmm. And she, she came from poverty. I came from wealth Mm -hmm. and, you know, and we, we met up and she said, there's more in me than you. And so we started having this conversation, which is what we need to have conversations. You know, it's not a right and wrong, you know, everybody could get in this polarized thing, but if we collaborate, like you said, it shifts the legacy. And I don't look at legacy that it's, the end of the life legacy. I'm talking about living legacy. I'm not going to wait till I die to, you know, or transition because I don't believe in death, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to wait till that happens to live like I'm working retired, right? Mm -hmm. I took all my vacations ahead of time, you know, just (laughs) right. Being in that state of mind, then, then the day is joyful and you Mm -hmm. like attracts alike and you magnetize Mm -hmm. people into your life that are symbiotic and collaborative that can move things forward in ways that you would never see. And shifting the legacy is a generational thing. And it's also the way that we were brought up. Like you said, you had all those stories in your head. And, you know, so we go down more in a behavioral thing because I found that I spent more time dealing with people's behavioral money situations than they're actually filling out applications so Mm. it's it is symbiotic that's why i include health wealth and peace of mind and and because they all work together for for the whole life for the whole Mm -hmm. whole package so on that note tell everybody your coordinates how they can get in touch Mm. with you and contact you to find out more about everything you've been talking about Ooh, thank you. The easiest way is through a free gift, which is a checklist on how to be a really great podcast guest. So you can have it in front of you while you sit down to do your your research and your outreach. And that will get you connected with me in all the ways. Uh, And you can grab that at lifewithpassion.com slash checklist. Cool. I'm going to get one of those. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'd be honored. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. And then for those of you that financial fitness strategy, see, we we went, we were just keep know, totally. you, right? <laughs> forget the forget the alarm, right? We yeah. just keep on tr- keep on trucking. But anyway, we want to hop on for financial fitness strategy. That's meet with Chris Miller. Dot com K R I S Miller where we talk about your financial fitness getting everything in shape and how to survive what we're, we're where we're at right now but I'm really excited about everything we talked about today and thank you so much for joining me with all of that joy thank you so much for having me and like you said to be continued all right sounds good to me There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.